Hey gang, Ross Brand here for LivestreamUniverse.com. I'm excited to bring you this interview that I had with PodFest founder Chris Kremitzos as we get set for PodFest Expo coming up March 6th to 8th in Orlando, Florida. It was a great opportunity to talk with Chris about what's coming up at PodFest and also some of the trends going on in new media from podcasting to live streaming to YouTube and video creation and tech. And it's just going to be a, a great opportunity if you're going to the conference to hear and get excited about what's coming up. And if you're on the fence about attending, uh, this might help you go ahead and pull the trigger and decide to attend. Uh, it was a really enjoyable co uh, conversation with Chris Kremitzos. And we'll get to that in just a second. First, I want to tell you about a couple of events StreamYard will be sponsoring at PodFest. One is the Live Streamers Meetup, Friday, March 6, 4 p.m. It'll be at the hotel at the Orlando World Center Marriott, the specific location to be announced. And do come by. StreamYard will have some giveaways and some appetizers. It's a great opportunity for uh, people who've been connecting virtually and through live streaming or podcasting to actually meet up and chat in person should be a good time. Also, on Saturday, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern, we'll have a, a special broadcast live from PodFest that will be sponsored by StreamYard. Rob Greenlee, Hall of Fame podcaster, will join me, and we'll talk about everything going on at the conference. Again, uh, that's March 7th, 10 a.m. Eastern, live from PodFest. 2020 with Hall of Fame podcaster Rob Greenlee, sponsored by our friends at StreamYard. And now let's get to the interview. It is with Chris Kremitzos, the founder of PodFest and a, a tremendous event organizer. And we get to into a lot of what's coming up at this year's conference, as well as some of the trends and topics people are talking about in the area of new media. Enjoy. Last year when Chris Kermitsos was our guest, he told the story about how he and his mother-in-law delivered a baby, his youngest daughter. And man, that was some story. I think you're under a lot of pressure to try and top that today. <laughs> There's no topping that. <laughs> so I'm okay with that. So tell us what's coming up, PodFest 2020. Um, you've got a, a, a lot of different tracks going on. You've got some some side events. Tell us uh, what you're looking forward to for PodFest 2020 coming up in March in Orlando. Well, this will kind of go right into what you've been asking people to give you the trends. Right. So PodFest is going into one of the biggest trends, which is very niche content creation within um, all fields of broadcasting. So you'll notice that we have our own uh, PodFest signature niche events, like we have one for audio drama. We have one for military creators. We have another one for um, – we have a, a lot of other ones. Then we have these other workshops that we are allowing other people to incubate, like uh, Podcast Editor Con, the, the first ever. Right. We have the first ever uh, Sports Pod Con and eSports Con. Uh, Cinema Vos, which is a Latin voiceover conference, very unique. So we have a lot of unique content as well as niche workshops catering to a very diverse range. It's actually doubled the size of PodFest. Last year we had 975 people. We're expecting close to 2,000 next year. Wow. That's awesome. So man. We're following the, yeah, we're, uh, Ross, we're following the trend of understanding that independents want uh, more variety and they want their niche to be highlighted. So we're, we're doing that. So a lot of niche content for niche creators. One of the great things about having the live chat is sometimes people have better questions than I would have thought of. So let me get right to a question from uh, Anita Sonia. She asks, will you be sharing PodFest online as well? There'll be some of it that will be streamed online um, through Podbean. They're one of our sponsors. They'll be streaming some audio out for some of the sessions. So I would uh, go to Podbean on the days of PodFest, March 6th, 7th, 8th. And you'll be able to capture some of it uh, streamed through the Podbean service. So for people who may not be primarily yeah. focused on podcasting, because it's called PodFest, immediately you think podcasting. Talk about some of the other options for people to learn and network and grow 
uh, in addition to podcasting? Well, I actually forgot the, the biggest side breakout or really other conference you do, which is VidFest for video content creators, YouTubers, live streamers. So VidFest happens a day before PodFest, March the 5th and the 6th. VidFest will have 400 people in it by itself. It, it'll be double from last year. So VidFest already has uh, people like Jeremy Vest uh, from VidIQ. We have some big heavy hitters coming in, talking and teaching at VidFest. So if you want to learn, by the way, uh, Ross, even if you don't go to VidFest, PodFest has a dedicated video track throughout the whole conference. We also have a dedicated track called Wildcard, and that is for all these unique things that you might not think about, mm -hmm. audiobooks, publishing. Um, we have a, a very unique uh, LinkedIn. So we have a lot of different topics we're covering as well as stuff for podcasters and video content creators. Talk about the new venue. Uh, you, for, for what, the last five years you were at the same venue. Now you have a, a new venue moving on up. Tell us what, uh, what to expect from the new venue. Yeah, so the new venue is the Marriott World. It's the world's largest Marriott with over 3,000 uh, hotel sleeping rooms. And it's one of the largest convention hotels, I think 10th in the country. So we will have a really huge space. Our trade show is going to be enormous with a lot of giveaways that we always do. Uh, it's it, Listen, PodFest, it's coming into its big boy pants next year. Uh, <laughs> and what I mean by that is we've always been a niche conference with amazing connections. So we're not changing that. But uh, we'll be on the international scene. We've had people from all over the world contact us about PodFest. So it's a pretty amazing time for us in growth. And it's all from word of mouth, to be honest. We don't do a lot of uh, advertising. Even though we do advertising, most of our growth has been from word of mouth. Uh, for people who are new to, to PodFest, may not have attended yet, uh, what are some of the central features, the central events that have been part of the last several pod fests that they can look forward to experiencing? Well, I'll give you, we do things very differently than most conferences. So one very unique thing is we start our, what you would call our orientation is uh, trivial warfare night uh, that Jonathan Oaks helped us put on last year. We actually have a team up brand new attendees with each other at a round table and play trivia against the whole room in real time. That's how we get to meet and greet each other. It's really fantastic. And then we have a uh, podcasting and, and uh, YouTube connection zone where content creators can meet each other through a strategic alliance. Uh, Ross, I don't know if you know this, but this year is the first year that we're doing a marketplace. It's where business owners can hire out services in real time. So they're going to oh, be wow. interviewing um, strategic consultants, voiceover people, video editors, uh, audio editors, because I, I always get every year, oh, I, I want to hire someone. So this year we're going to intentionally combine them in a room where they could hire actively in real time. And then we have after parties for everybody. And, and I got this idea from my peer, Jessica Kupferman, who's a genius. Uh, we created, um, we have a dueling piano howl at the moon party we did last year. We're going to do it again mm -hmm. this year on site, but we also will have an introvert room for the introverts. So there'll be a, if it gets too loud or too crazy, there'll be a party room that'll be specifically quiet for more quiet connectivity without loud music blasting you in the face. Wow. You really think of everything for um, the experience of of the average of attendee. Uh, I really love how you run the event, how you, you seem to know everyone's name. You seem to make everybody feel comfortable um, and spend time with the, the attendees while also putting on this fantastic and, and rather extensive event um I, I don't know how you do it but it, it's it's amazing i imagine it's because you're so well prepared throughout the year that the event has a a certain smooth way of running while while you're there well th listen this year i have a really amazing team and right now it's chaotic at this time in the promotion cycle but our job is to get all the details done before the event and then you're right. Then I'm, I could be present with everybody, having a great time. And um, I know most of my attendees, like Ross. I know you know you've put pictures up with your dad online. So right. I like re I remember those things. And it's like, and you you kind of know who the people are. So we really make it a a point of getting to know each other. But it's not just us. It's Glenn the Geek. It's right. Jessica Kupferman. It's my wife. It's all these amazing people. I've been part of it since the beginning. Dave Jackson School of Podcasting. So it's a huge family, and it's just expanding, and it's getting bigger and 
it's more exciting. I, I, we have something very special, Ross. I don't know how many people close out their session with the closing keynote being the attendees themselves, right. telling us what they're grateful for. But it's kind of the the hallmark of this event. It's it's uh, unique in its own way. Love it, love it. Um, talk a little bit about uh, when you you mentioned this marketplace, and I love this idea because one of the reasons a lot of us are are working solo isn't because we don't necessarily need help with a, a certain niche area where we know we could hire. We don't have the time or the the knowledge of where to necessarily go to find somebody who would fit in with what we're creating so the the ability to have people there that you can actually uh talk to an interview right on the spot and feel like you're connecting and see their work this is amazing for uh for people who just don't have the time to do a lot of uh, a lot of searching for that party who, with whom they can outsource some of the work to. Every year I get asked after PodFest, who should I hire? And I'm like, didn't you meet them? They were at <laughs> PodFest. So we realized there's a disconnect. So I'd rather, like you said, in real time, you could interview three or four people. And, and Ross, you know this, some people you do better with, other people you don't. So everybody knows there's a connection that needs to be made, not only work-wise, but also sometimes personality fit. So... Um, I figured, why don't we do that in real time? We have the space. Let's put the people together. The first year, I'm going to learn a lot of how to do it, right, uh, how we can make it smoother. But the key is we will have a home now for our editors, our voiceover actors, our professionals to connect with other people that need their services in real time. And is that, you know, is that a, something that they pay to be a part of, or is that, uh, you know, tables are set up and you get a shift, or how? How exactly? There will be there there will be tables. I'm still working out the details, but you're right. the the business owners themselves will be sitting at a table, mm -hmm. and then the service providers, the business owners, will put out a logo. So if I need video or audio, there'll be a a card on my table, right? And then you would sit down where you see an opening. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna try and match to have it an equal number, but uh, for instance, sponsors will get first crack. So since they're sponsoring, putting in money at a higher level, and our inner circle ticket holders, if they're in the service, they'll get first chance okay. to meet with those people. And after that, we'll open it to the general service providers. So uh, an attendee who doesn't Absolutely. have, can, can actually participate yes, in that. Yes, correct. It, it's or, open for It's included. Everybody. Okay, that's fantastic. It, it might be 30 minutes after you know the right. sponsor, everybody, but it, they will definitely have a crack at it. Absolutely. That's awesome. So uh, I want to ask you about your prediction. You mentioned YouTube and you mentioned how-to videos. We talked about it a little bit uh, yesterday on StreamYard Connect, shared your prediction. Uh, what do you see for YouTube? A lot of people are getting a little concerned about YouTube. They're wondering if maybe they're too late or if the rules are changing or where the opportunity is. Is it just for kids? What do you say to people who are skeptical about YouTube being an opportunity for them at this point? So I'm going to give you the general view because like when you go into microscopic views, everybody's got their own political philosophy and all that. And, right. And, and there is a lot of merit to what they're saying about YouTube throttling certain content and not content, but that's not my well, the viewpoint I'm looking at right now. If I'm a content creator, a how-to person, a business owner, YouTube right now, if you have the resources, is the place to put your content. It's not only a video delivery platform, it's a search engine that is just getting more and more traffic as each day moves forward. Wow. And there's more and more people like us, Ross, that maybe aren't as savvy as you and I, but now they're showing up to YouTube searching certain terms that they didn't a few years back. So those content creators need to come in and fill the gap. Yeah. Now, what when when people go and let's say they they have their area of expertise and they they start a channel, are, are <laughs> do you advise people to start with targeting as wide as you can within that niche? Like start with the beginner and work to it. You know, specializing in in videos for advanced people, or where do you think the right place is to start when you take a a very specific niche that you have expertise in and you want to do how to videos for people who want to learn something and uh, more about that area. If that I mean, makes I sense, mean, it's very vague. My question, uh, the easiest thing to do is get a tool like keywords any everywhere mm -hmm. and search what, what terms are being searched the most within your niche mm -hmm. and start with a how to video in that realm. 
You do need to have some kind of editing abilities. That's why at VidFest and PodFest, we will have video editors that people could hire. There's a lag on the video side. There's a lot of audio editors, but I don't see as many great video editors that people could use, even though they're out there. So find a good editor to help you do some basic editing because you definitely need a good thumbnail image for people that don't know what that is. That's the image that's like, ah, and then you put some words on that, right? <laughs> But that's not an image that's right. in the video. That's an image you create to put in front of the video, just in case someone's wondering. Um, so that you know, you got to have a good thumbnail. You got to do some SEO keyword research on the podcasting front. Uh, the niche uh, content's growing. The geo-targeted content's growing. A lot of female influencers are jumping on board. She podcast is probably one of the biggest trends that I saw this past year. Their conference uh, went from zero to six hundred and fifty attendees. Wow. They packed out the Marriott Marquis in Atlanta. Uh, Jessica and Elsie have done an amazing job. That that conference, I believe, will be bigger than podcast movement one day. I, I truly believe that. Um, they're just do, there's something special there with the the female content creator, and I think it's only going to grow bigger and bigger. And that community is very supportive of each other. A lot of right. money coming into the space, so you're going to see a lot of corporate. Right now, iHeart's doing something very smart. They're using the old asset of radio and incubating podcasts that they're buying and bringing it into their radio and then juicing up the numbers. Wow. So they're they're taking their brand, brand equity from radio, infusing it into their podcasting properties and literally quadrupling the numbers within a six month year period. So they're getting ready for the transition. They're not dumb, they know what's going on. So uh, we will have a big announcement to make about um, PodVest and some really cool presenters that I can't just say just yet that will be there but they will be talking about the future transition of how all this comes out and how it all plays together. That's so exciting. Um, some of these different trends you're talking about. Um, if you don't mind me asking, how do you stay on top? You, you do such a great job of staying on top of what's happening in all these different verticals. How do you, how do you do that? Is it more through contacts or are there certain websites or news sources that you you use to really, uh, you really have a good feel of where things are going in these different content creation online uh, media industries. I, I've I've been on the cutting edge for a long time. I just didn't understand how to utilize the information. Like now, I actually have conferences that um, I could actually monetize my information in a way. And now I'm getting paid all kinds of money for consulting. But I will tell you this, Ross. As a young man in '96, when AOL came online, I remember being fascinated about the future of what's going on. So I've been right. I've been part of it from the beginning of the internet. So I've been enthralled. So my friend, my one friend's one of the top uh, Alexa skill builders. He actually builds tools for the data lake. For those of you who don't know, in the Alexa world, it's not the cloud, it's the data lake. <laughs> so I'll ask him what's going on because he's building the plumbing for the lake for all the skill builders. So if you get a guy like that, I mean, he built um, an Alexa uh, skill that became a sales manager for an entire sales team. So the the sales team was reporting to an Alexa bot that was then managing an entire sales team. And you know, productivity went through the, uh, through the roof, Ross, because no one could BS the Alexa uh, bot because she wow. you it's not a human, so you can't BS a human. <laughs> Right, so she right. was just reporting back to you what you were saying and what you were going to do. So this is the world we're living into, and I'm just fascinated by it. But I'm also a realist, understanding like I'm not, I, I, I'm not going to tell you I'm not one of those people that, oh, I wish it was like this from yesteryear. I do have those thoughts, but I delete it as quick as they come in. Because right, the world right. is changing, and we gotta we got to grow with it. When you, when you look at the the entire kind of the entire spectrum of of podcasting right now and how much it's being talked about and how much money like Spotify and some brands and corporations are pouring into it even doing internal podcasting is is podcasting going to go the way of sort of big media big business or do you think there'll always be a place for the independent creator to use podcasting either to uh supplement their business or to make some money from podcasting or to continue to have a nice presence and branding themselves and and reaching an audience even as the big boys jump into the game so to so speak so for us so for us to understand how podcasting works i used to do shows on public access mm -hmm. i know you know what that is russ but most people don't <laughs> know what public access is Public access was a time when cable TV controlled everything that the public, each county, had to get a channel 
So then us, community people like Russ, I like to do video, could literally go drive down to right. the station and be allowed to have a show. Um, podcasting in its uh, creation is a public access platform. The entire public has access. There's no gatekeeper that controls the medium. So you want to see the independent content creator can grow as high as they want to. Like look at Joe Rogan. He's bigger than any network, depending on how much momentum they could build. And you could also have um, smaller content creators that are big enough where they get gobbled up to networks. So we see a lot of money in a lot of this, but public will always have access and right. there will always be the ability for someone to do great things. You just need to have patience. This is what I will tell people. People want to like a hit within a month. Spend three years, four years building up a platform with right. your numbers growing. You'll, you'll grow something. Just don't expect to hit the, the paint off the ball right out the gate, you know, but, but pay attention to your numbers. Thanks so much for joining us for this interview with PodFest founder Chris Kermitzos. And thanks to Chris for spending some time with us as we get ready for PodFest Expo. Coming up next Friday through Sunday, March 6th to 8th in Orlando, Florida. You can learn more about the event at PodFestExpo.com. And don't forget, we'll have a couple of StreamYard-sponsored events going on. There'll be the meetup on Friday, March 6, 4 p.m. at the Event Hotel, Orlando World Center Marriott, and a live broadcast on Saturday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern Hall of Fame podcaster Rob Greenley will be joining me as we go live from PodFest 2020. Thanks again for joining us, and thanks again to Chris Kermitzos for spending some time. A wonderful interview, and it's going to be a great conference. Hopefully see you there or chat with you online from the conference. Take care, everybody.